Welcome to the shooting show. This week, Byron puts the night sight through its paces out in the field. Plus, we meet the two brains behind this innovative product. Out to tackle the growing rabbit problem, Byron and Eden head to the farm kitted out with the latest night vision gear, the Night Sight NS200. The amount of rabbits on the ground is immediately obvious through the screen. The boys have a lot of work to do with a 2-2 rimfire. Eden takes the reins to start with and gets to grips with the head-up shooting method the NS200 requires with some early bunnies. But after struggling to consistently deliver the goods under the threat of incoming rain, I like that. Byron and Eden head for home. They're not before putting a black rabbit or Parsons rabbit just before the close of play. Judging distance through the unit has proved difficult, so they formulate a plan before heading out again. Later on tonight, I'm going to be heading out for rabbits with my buddy Eden. Uh, we're going to go up to a bit of ground that I got permission on uh, a few months back. In fact, uh, you will see myself and my brother giving the rabbits a, a good going over during the day. Uh, when we first moved onto the ground, it didn't look like they'd been shot uh, for quite a few years, uh, judging by how tame they were. It was pretty easy to walk around and wipe up a hundred rabbits. We've been doing it quite a lot. We've shot good numbers. Uh, we've also been out at night with a lamp, and they're certainly getting wiser. So tonight, I'm going to be using a new bit of kit. I was at the night sight factory with Pete Carr a few months back, and they've kindly lent me the NS200 to see how I get on with it in the field. Um, so we're going to give it a, a real good test tonight. I did have it out last week. Um, we were struggling a, a little bit with the, the weather and the conditions. And uh, what we've decided to do is opt for a static position. The place that we're going to tonight has a lot of rabbits coming from an embankment out along a fence line. So our game plan is, I've got my 17 HMR. We're going to uh, go down the field line up along the fence line and just let everything go quiet let the rabbits come out and then take everything within the first hundred yards let me give you a quick rundown of the night sight it's basically a camera that looks down your day scope and projects an image to a little screen that's mounted on top using infrared uh, it's a very simple yet clever design and allows you to use exactly the same rifle that you would do during the day at night um, this is the camera that I have in my hand here and it plugs in, into a little rubber shoe on the back of your, your scope. In here you have the camera and a little focus adjustment ring. In the back, two cables. One goes to the screen and the other goes to a battery pack. There isn't really a lot else to tell you about how to use it. it it's pretty intuitive. Once you fix the rubber shoe over, um, there's two sizes so that uh, it can fit different sized scopes. Once you've plugged this in and focused it, the only thing you have to do, assuming your battery is charged, is turn on the screen. Now you've actually got one, two, three, four, five, and that's it. Five different intensities. Um, depending on how far out you're shooting and um, how clear your picture is, you'll, you'll want different intensities. I've checked this uh, already at night make sure it was shooting exactly where it does in the day. I had no reason to suspect it wouldn't, but it's always a good idea to check these things. So as soon as Eden arrives, we're going to head out and see what damage we can do to the bunny population. It's going to be very interesting to see um, if they are particularly disturbed by the crack of the HMR, given there's going to be no lamp on. As far as they're concerned, that crack is coming from the pitch black. With the 17 HMR setup and distance ranged at 100 yards, the boys soon target the abundance of conies on this relatively unshot ground.
With the distances successfully under control after a bit of daytime preparation and the forgiving trajectory of the HMR, they now have no trouble rolling over rabbit after rabbit, with both shooters finding success and much enjoyment with the NS200. Being able to shoot under the cover of darkness has certainly improved the tally. Spooky bunnies will no longer be an issue. It may be pest control but rabbit is also great to eat and after the onslaught has finished the two hunters pick up the fallen to take to the larder. With the weather bringing a premature end to another evening's sport, Red and Eden return to the car to discuss their thoughts on the night sight. Well, Eden, I think we've been beaten by the weather yet again. Another night where the rain has just come down. So we've had to cut our our night out for rabbits a bit short. But what do you think of the, the night side? We've had a little bit of a chance to play with it now. Yeah, I think it's a good unit uh, for the money as well. It's it's quite good. Like, your basic night vision entry price is, like, double that. So, yeah, for the, for the money, you're getting a good a good night vision unit. So I'd be quite happy with that. And what about the operation? How did, how did you find it? Yeah, well, when we went out with the 2-2, it wasn't the best. Like, we had problems with the working out ranges and things like that. But with, when we went out with the 1-7 tonight, it just it worked a dream, to be honest. Uh, you, anything that you saw, you knew was within range. Because, well, most things are with the 1-7. So you could just pop them off and they had no idea what was going on. I think we're going to have good fun using it over the next couple yeah, of months. Yeah, definitely go out with it again. Yeah, well hopefully when it doesn't rain. Exactly. Right, let's go home. The night sight has shown how effective it can be against rabbits and over the coming months Byron will be adding it to his foxing setup to see how it handles this larger pest. Byron once again getting to play with all the best kit and now the shoot and show news. This is the Shooting Show News. Fresh reports of deer being culled using helicopters have led the Scottish Gamekeepers Association to condemn the illegal practice. A hillwalker reported seeing helicopters being used to round up deer at the Karor Estate on the 31st of October. The estate has denied the claims. SGA Chairman Alex Hogg said the use of helicopters was simply anathema and there were major animal welfare issues surrounding it. Shooting organisations have voiced opposition to health and safety executive plans to ban rat baits in the countryside. In a recent NGO poll, three quarters of gamekeepers said they relied on these baits to do their jobs and the NGO said rat numbers would escalate with damaging consequences if they were banned. An NGO spokesman said scientific evidence to justify a ban did not exist. More in the next issue of Modern Gamekeeping. Danielle Parazzi, founder of the famous mark of Parazzi shotguns, has died. Over a 60-year career, Danielle was responsible for designing and manufacturing a succession of pioneering and iconic game and competition guns. Not least among these was the legendary MX-8, debuted at the 1968 Olympics. Since then, the MX-8 has become the most successful competition gun in shooting history, with Peter Wilson using one to claim double trap gold at London 2012. Read the full obituary in the January issue of Clay Shooting. And finally, the Countryside Alliance's Go Wild for British Game Month is in full swing, with a range of events taking place across the country to encourage people to eat game. As part of the campaign, MEP Ashley Fox of the southwest of England and Gibraltar visited a shooting estate in Devon. Mr Fox commented that it was fantastic to see the hard work that goes into making the game industry such a success. Pubs and restaurants across the country have added game to their menu, and Marks and Spencer will be adding a game range to their ready meals. To find out what's on near you, visit gametoeat.co.uk. That was the Shooting Show News. Now we've seen what the night sight can do. I talked to the two brains behind this innovative and affordable unit, Dave and Phil Craven. So guys, we're here in Stamford Bridge in North Yorkshire, the home of night sight. Uh, it was an, an interesting development which has just been going 12 months, I believe or just over. Uh, can you tell me how it actually started? Well, it, uh, it all started with me, really. Um, I was a keen air gunner, um, and 
I used to shoot um, vermin on a friend's farm and things like that. And I was on YouTube one day and uh, I was noticing that I was looking for searching, uh, doing a search on shooting rats. And I saw uh, a person called Cubbly Cat on YouTube, who is now Sniper Cat, shooting rats in a garden with a Sony camcorder fastened to the back of a scope. So I thought, <coughs> I've got one of those cameras. I thought I'm going to have a go. So I'm a tool maker by trade. So I went on my lathe, turned a nice ferrule to fit the back of the uh, scope, made it fit the uh, lens on the camera. And there we go. I had my scope with the camera looking down it, crosshairs on the picture. So I thought I'd go and see if I could shoot some rats with it. Yeah, so what happened was, uh, obviously I saw Dave with his uh, camcorder and uh, <clears throat> I think the technology has moved on quite a little bit uh, for uh, night vision and infrared uh, type of technology. So I looked on um, uh, eBay and cobbled a load of things together from there, from all kinds of components uh, to produce a much more sensitive camera than the one you'd get in your um, camcorder. And uh, I looked at different types of illuminators and uh, it was the illumination uh, that was limiting that you could get on, uh, on, on eBay and those kind of products. So from there we went to a, a company that developed the lens as far as and the technology behind you know, boosting infrared LED technology for us and that's, you know, that was the process that took us down the road to coming up with the night sight. So guys, the thing with the night sight that has grabbed the shooting world by storm is its affordability. Now, was that within the original vision or did this come afterwards? Well, originally, um, me and Phil were thinking of uh, manufacturing these like a cottage industry where we could sell them to people who were new, people who uh, liked the product. Um, but then it became apparent to me that it was actually such a good idea and such a good product that it had legs. Uh, and then I, I talked to my friend and neighbour uh, Gary, who is now one of our partners, and Gary's a businessman, and he basically um, convinced me to make the step, um, and with Phil's help, we then went to develop it into a, from a business point of view. Because initially we thought that the 50 would be selling much quicker, but it actually it was the 200. So then it showed us that uh, the potential market of the 200 was probably would probably outweigh the 50 which has proved to be the case. Mm, yeah. We're selling more 200s than 50s, even though initially we thought the market for the air rifle is much bigger than the firearm certified market. You know, there are, I think there's something like 7 million air gunners in the country where there's 180 odd thousand licensed shooters. So there's a much bigger pool in the air gun uh, group. Uh, so we thought the 50 would fly but people look at the difference in price maybe and just think you know for two for the 200 pounds more I can see like four times further yeah so maybe there's uh, a little bit of that that people can just afford the difference uh, rather than uh, buying the 50 but the 50 you know delivers exactly like the 200 does the NS50 delivers exactly the same um, uh, quality of image. Optical quality, yeah, optical yeah. quality, yeah. Up to, uh, we're saying it's an NS50, but that will see comfortably 70 yards. Yes. Depending on your, it's always down to how good your, uh, your optic is on your scope. So, you know, that's, that's the, uh, the way we've built both products. Well, guys, it's great to meet and uh, see a Yorkshire success story, homegrown in this county. So let's, uh, you know, all wish you the very best for the future. Thank you very much. All right, thank you. Thank you. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching. We're out every Monday, 7.30pm UK time. This is The Shooting Show.